back to the MMA Insiders on ESPN Radio 1100 and 98.9 FM. And we just found out who the um, spot was, and he's he's terminated. He's no longer he's no longer uh, working uh, 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 right now. So we found out exactly who the spot was, <laughs> and it's, it's true. Everything so I said was true. So who was the spot, Rampage? Rampage, you know who's who the, the spot? Was. You don't mind asking, answering that. Hey. Hey, well, hey, why don't you tell don't, the world who the spy was, Rampage? On, on the reason, on the reason, on the reason why I won't tell the world who it is because the guy did work at Muscle Farm, and the guys at Muscle Farm found him, and they fired him, and I didn't want to bring Muscle Farm on top. But the guy did work there in the office at Muscle Farm, but the so, owner of Muscle Farm found the guy and, and fired him. What's his name, Anthony? Yeah, Leonard's name. His name is Leonard, and you know Leonard because you send him K Swiss shoes and stuff. And everything from your manager. He's great friends with your manager. I was saying, okay, shoot, shoot. Truth. I have no clue who Linux is, Mayor Page. Wow. This story, like as if the trash talk between Rampage and Jones for UFC 135 wasn't intriguing enough. Now we've got MMA Spygate. So you can pick a side on that. I mean, it's not going to have much to do with the fight, but it just adds more intrigue. A uh, guy who's pretty tight with Rampage. Uh, Rampage has worked out for years at the Wolf's Lair, and he's the guy who essentially put that camp in the U.K. on the map, is Michael Bisping. He joins Steve Cofield. He joins Adam Hill here on the Jewelers of Las Vegas MMA Insiders. What's up, Michael? Hey, how, how you doing? We're good. We're good. Good. What's your reaction? Before we get to the fight and, you know, the stuff that really matters in the cage, what is your sure. reaction to what's gone down between these guys and this whole spy thing? Uh, I mean, I mean, to be honest, uh, unfortunately, I haven't really been able to get um, up to Denver and help out with the camp this time. I just recently moved to California, so I've been helping get the family settled in and whatnot. Um, so I don't know too much about it, but what I do know is that, um, you know, they seem pretty certain that, that uh, there was a spy and they found a guy and it's called Leonard and all the rest of it. And if, if that's what they're saying, then that's what happened. It's as simple as that. So I can't really go into too much details because I don't know, I don't know the details, you know. I'd only be assuming. But uh, if that's what they're saying, then I think it's fair to say and that that's what happened, you know. So how would you feel if you were the guy who was being accused of spying? Uh, because that essentially throws your character into question. So, that, I mean, if I don't know if Jones did it or not, but he certainly has to defend himself. So how would you feel if someone said, hey, Michael Bisping is using dirty tactics to get an edge? Well, <laughs> it would have been the first time people uh, said uh, disparaging remarks about me. So, uh, you know, I've got tough, uh, thick skin these days. So... Me, personally, I wouldn't be too bothered. I'd just be focusing on the fight and focusing on the training. Um, if that's what he's doing and he's stupid to that level, then, you know, it's a little disappointing. But, uh, as I said, I don't know too many details about it, so I can't really comment too much. Well, Michael, how big of a deal would it be if, if somebody was spying on your camp? I mean, is there that much that they can that they can gain from that information to beat you? Um, I, I mean, obviously... I mean, if a guy's injured, you know, and, and they're trying to keep that quiet, whatever, that could be an issue. You know, I mean, me personally, I don't really care. But, uh, you know, I mean, everybody's different, you know. Um, as I said, I mean, if he's, go if he's dropping to that level and he's getting people to spy, I don't know if he is or he isn't, but uh, apparently they found the guy and they fired him at, at uh, Muscle Farm. If that's what they're doing, then, you know, it's, it's disappointing. You know, the, the, the discourse should be about honor and respect and uh, that ain't too honorable. I guess what you know, what's kind of the story that's being developed here, and Rashad Evans has brought this up as well, and we're talking to Michael Bisping, is that maybe John Jones is a bit duplicitous in terms of the uh, the image that he puts forth in public, and maybe the way he is, um, you know, behind the scenes. I mean, we deal with him in the media. I like the guy. I don't think he's a bad guy. Um, what have you heard about him? And, and and do you kind of do you feel for him because you're a guy who gets it. You know, uh, you, you rose sure. to a certain level of fame, and, and this is something tough to deal with when you're a 24-year-old emerging superstar. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, in some ways, I do sympathize with the guy. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm rooting for Vampage, and I hope he knocks his ass out on Saturday night, and I'm pretty sure he is going to do that. Um, but um, it kind of comes with success, you know. I mean, as you, as, as you climb the ladder and uh, you get recognition and people start knowing who you are, people like to drag you back down. You know, so, yeah, you know, I, mean, I think it's human nature in some ways. Um, yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's a little disappointing, but uh, uh, what do I think of him? I mean, I, I've met John a few times. Seems all right. You know, I don't know him too much, so I, I couldn't really comment. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, up until very recently, I was based in the UK. So, you know, I've, I've had very many dealings with the guy. So, really, honestly, you're asking me these questions, but, you know, I haven't really got the answers that you want to hear. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not in the best position to speak about it, really. 
So you mentioned, you know, you're rooting for Jones. You're tight with the guy uh, to knock, as you said it, his ass out. Reaching the rampage. Reaching yeah, yeah. the rampage. Yeah, yeah, close to rampage. Did I say Jones? Yeah, I'm sorry. You said close, Jones, yeah. Yeah, my bad, my bad. I know you're close to rampage. So you think he has a good chance to win. Now, is that based on uh, rampage being focused or some flaws on the Jones side? Uh, it's to do with Rampage being the best Rampage that there has been for a very, very long time. I've literally just been sat up until five minutes ago with our boxing coach, Mark Kinney, and he's been telling me all about it, what's been happening in the camp, the ups and downs, and listen, Rampage is on fire. Um, he's been knocking people out cold in training. And we're, we're not talking, you know, we're not talking idiots, we're talking... You know, serious, uh, high-level boxers, big, tall guys who, who uh, match up to Jones, you know, uh, uh, physically. And um, he's been taking them apart. He's been knocking them out cold. You know, a few guys went to the hospital. And that's not hype. That, 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 that's really what happened. Uh, my boxing coach moved out to California with him. He's been with him for three months. Um, he's in shape. He's on weight. He's determined. He's focused. He wants his belt back, you know, and he, he's got the motivation. And I truly believe, and so does the entire team, He's going to do it on Saturday night because, you know, trust me, um, the guy's on fire. He's been a bit disrespected uh, by a lot of people the last year or so. You know, uh, Evans was calling him Frankenstein, saying he's super slow. But when you think back with Rampage, it's not like anyone's really whipped the guy's ass or really rocked him while he's been fighting in the U.S. after his pride days. Pardon? No, I was Can saying. You see that place? No, I was saying. I, you know, I think he's been dissed a little bit. Like, oh, he's getting old, but it's not like he's been slaughtered by anyone or knocked out by anyone. So I'm not sure why. Uh, Rampage no, never, never, you know what I mean? I mean, um, John Jones has been talking a lot about finishing him. If he was to finish him, I think, I, I, I don't know, would that be the, oh, he has been finished by Vandalay a long time ago, but in the UFC, he's never been finished. You know, Rampage Jackson is, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a different species in some respects, you know what I mean? This guy, you know, he's one of the toughest, one of the bitches walking this planet, you know, and that's just the facts. And he's trained his ass off, he's in shape. You know, trust me, this ain't going to... I think John Jones is underestimating him, and if he has done, he's a fool. Simple as that. Michael Bisping's with us, getting ready for UFC 135 down here at PT's. You can watch the pay-per-view tomorrow night. Before we get you out of here, uh, we watched the debut of Tough 14. Again, they did a great job with the... Uh, the trailer. I don't know. There's some jackasses in there, and I I don't know what, what happened. I don't know what happened there, but but I'll tell you on the front you'll end. You'll see. You'll yeah, see. All I'm, will become apparent. I'm all about jackasses. Being one myself. Uh, well, the, the, Miller's one. Yeah. How, there you go. How, how bad? How? Because it looked like it gets pretty heated. He was driving you nuts. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, I, as you see on that little trailer at the end of uh, the first episode. You know, he crosses the line. He pushes me. Gets in my face. You know, he he, he tries to get physical a few times. You know. And, I mean, you've got two choices. One, do nothing and bite your tongue. Or two, get into a fight on that international television wearing a pair of jeans, you know. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to disrespect myself and my family. I've got three kids. I need to set an example, you know. So, uh, yeah, things did get heated. But uh, I'm going to wait for December 3rd. And don't worry, I've put that on ice. And uh, December 3rd is going to be in a lot of trouble. Michael, you and uh, Miller did a conference call last week that was one of the enter most entertaining 45 minutes I've ever spent on the phone. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you said you don't like him, but is there a part of you that kind of enjoys that back and forth? There, there's definitely a, you know, a good dynamic between you two. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it was, uh, in some respects, you know, good uh, matchmaking, if you will, by the U.S. team putting us together. Um, you know, I mean, listen, listen, Jason's not a bad person, um, and in small doses, he's actually okay, but you spend a lot of time around the guy, you want to kill yourself. You know? <laughs> so uh, rather than kill myself, I'll kill him. There you go. Uh, let's finish up on this. So I watched all the fights. You know, they had some full fights. They had highlights, and I've always believed that the 45 and 35s we're going to make for the best show ever because, you know, there's no weak guys. They're all well-rounded. They all have gas tanks. Am I uh, overdoing it by saying I think there's going to be more good prospects that turn into legit UFC fighters off of this show than any of the previous seasons? Oh, oh absolutely, absolutely. The talent on this season is amazing. Um, I was very lucky. My team were uh, had a fantastic team. They trained hard. They listened. They did what they were told. And they were all there to fight. And they were all there to have a career in the UFC. And you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, only two guys are going to win this show. But um, there's going to be a whole lot of guys from season 14 that you're going to see fighting in the UFC. That's yeah. a guarantee. We're looking forward to watching it unfold. Are you, uh, are you actually coming here before the fight? Are you going to train here? Are you, going to, are you moving here? What happened with all that? I live in uh, Orange County, California right now. Yeah, we just moved there recently. Kids are in school. 
Yeah, loving it. The weather's nice. You know, I mean, I love California. Contrary to popular belief, um, I love America. I, I have a lot of good friends here. And as I said, I just moved here. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing my camp on the first half of it in Orange County. The second half, I'm going to be doing my camp in Denver at the Muscle Farm Training Facility. And, uh, yeah, it's all good. Good deal. Well, we're glad you're here. You're one of our favorites. You always speak your mind. And we're looking forward to the, uh, the rest of the show and the fight here in Vegas. Thanks, Steve. Always a pleasure. See you.